shooters, reloaders, and conversationalists, welcome to Ponder Labs. Today, Zero to Hero Project, Autoloader Build for Precision Rimfire. Precision Rimfire is a fairly new shooting sport. It's based on military and tactical shooting. We use uh, sniper methods, long range shooting techniques. We're using low cost 22 rimfire ammo. This brings targeting ranges down to 300 yards versus the 1200 plus yards we see for center fire. We have very diverse shooting positions and target presentations, leading to some very interesting courses of fire. You can start with any 22 uh, rimfire rifle, but over time, what's uh, called precision trainers have emerged. Today, there's a full array of buy it, build it, and tune it configurations. These are usually bolt actions, uh, the four power scope, 50 millimeters, the uh, bipods, rear front bags. The stocks are different. Um, the ergonomic type stocks have very uh, stout metal bedding or even internal chassis making them very stiff. And there are also now a full range of external chassis. There's a good chance that your rifle maker already offers one or more options of a precision trainer. For instance, uh, here's CZ, no less than five different configurations. Most folks would peg the start of precision rimfire as such, probably in the late 2000s. But if you think about it as stuff based on military and tactical shooting and using rimfire ranging to mirror center fire, you see this actually got started in England back in the 30s. It culminated in the Book of the Rifle in 1940, which was revised a couple of times during World War II. What's interesting, the author, Lieutenant Banks, would be right at home with the topics we discussed today. Trajectories, precision hold, optics. Um, for example, here's out of his appendix. This shows both the um, hypersonic and subsonic trajectories for 22 rimfire all the way out to 200 yards. Um, ICI was a large chemical company in England, started in the 20s, and they actually had a division that made 22 rimfire. So there's a little bit of a historical note for folks. You might ask, why don't we see more autoloaders and precision rimfires? Let's take a look at this. Like so many things we do in uh, Pounder Labs, we look at this through modeling and analytics. So let's bifurcate this from the standpoint of group dispersions. Over here, let's call this rigid design. These will be our bold actions. Let's build a simple model. All the things that are importing and shooting will just lump into this air term so we can focus in on the dispersions that uh, contributed uh, strictly from being a rigid design. Well, the breech is locked and all the kinetic forces go down the barrel. Of course, there's bolt thrust and recoil, but everything goes down the barrel because the breech is locked in. Comparatively, we'd expect to see higher velocities, slower cycling, because we have to run the bolt. And as a minimum, we have to break position to operate the bolt, but we're going to get smaller groups. On the other side, we can call this dynamic semi-auto. So again, we have what has to be dealt with on the rigid system, but now we can also see dispersions tributed because of the dynamic nature. We can think of it as a breach with a movable bolt. So now the kinetic forces, in addition to going down the barrel, they have to be used to cycle the action. We would expect lower velocities, faster cycling, and the nice thing is to stay in position. But what we want to understand, do groups open up? So we want to think, does the energy bleed off to uh, run the dynamic action to great groupings? So let's look into this. In late 2018, we built a autoloader called the VQ. We start with the uh, Vicorxon Classic straight barrel fluting. At the time, the Titan 22 stock was new and it's designed for all the Ruger 1022 receivers, but to get up the scope length, you need to add the, uh, the cheek piece here. And we're not keen on that cold plastic, so we added the Pacmar pack skin. Kid two-stage trigger. We think it's important to match the operation 
uh, with the ammunition we're using. So we want to match up the spring. Kit offers a guide rod and spring kit, but uh, that would bind up in the corks and bolts. So we developed a custom bolt guide and now it works just fine. We go with the tandem cross double shot. This is a like two Ruger mags back to back. It's clear and uh, it's very easy for us because many of our stages are 20 rounds. Just a quick flip and then you're back down on it. Uh, we have the Bushnell 6 to 18 40 millimeter uh, tactical scope and the pick rail is ground flat on the receiver. It's built in. So to get the slope we need, we went with the Burr Signature Z rings, which have uh, inserts. So we we're able to put the inserts in to get in a 20 millimeter of us, uh, a 20 MOA of slope. This is the initial performance we got from the VQ with the SK Standard Plus at 50 yards. Velocity right in about 1040 but uh, more importantly, the Mach number about 0.91, which is where we wanted to be. Folks that measure group size with range, it's roughly an MOA, but we use uh, CEP, circular or probable, in this case 0 0.20. For this, uh, the CEP is an important measure. If we can get under a quarter of an inch with our years of uh, shooting these matches and using Monte Carlo simulation for modeling hits on target, we know that this will give us a fighting chance to clear all the targets in our typical match. After our initial good performance with the VQ, we thought we were ready to go. But the gun started throwing shots all over the place, creating poor groupings, tried different ammo and lots, no improvements, and even with careful cleaning, firing, and adjustments, we couldn't get it to work, so we just simply shelved the whole project. So in 2019, we focused on uh, moving away from the onshoots, which make very fine guns, but we feel they weren't on the front of the curve for precision trainers. And though the CZ455 was a great gun, there were several things about the 457 we liked. So we went into the uh, varmint precision trainer shown here, and then the 20-inch trainer we put in the MDT Oryx chassis here. The 2020 season was a mess. We lost access to our 100-yard indoor range with the heavy benches. And then for the uh, reduced number of matches, we just used the 457s. Now, going into the 2021 20, season, we wanted to revisit the VQ and doubled our efforts to get it to work. The Ruger 1022 was introduced in 1964 is a low cost, fun type plinker. It's a simple design and operation, not really meant for serious target shooting. Use a single takedown screw and what we call pinch point for bedding. But Corkson came along and made a beautifully designed and fabricated rifle based on this design. These rifles are great for shoot and scoot matches like Steel Challenge, where lightweight, uh, high rate of fire, High magazine capacity and reliability are a premium. Still uses the same single screw and pinch point bed design. The Titan 22 stock leverages this design. It has a small, probably a 540 set screw to take up play in the rear anchor. We think this is a poor adjustment concept and wears quickly and uh, puts the entire bedding load onto the front takedown screw. So basically what we know for all building quality guns, poor bedding leads to poor groups. The company offered a couple of fixes. One, instead of the polymer tip, they went to a brass tip on that little, uh, little set screw. And then they introduced something called the spike. So here we have the anchor and with a screw with a point on it. So after you uh, put, it to put the anchor in, you drive it in, you drive the, uh, the spike into the back of the receiver. Here's their offering for the kit action, which we think is superior. It screws into the back of the receiver, and then the anchor uh, screw brings it down and gives a tight two-point uh, uh, bedding. But unfortunately, we're going to have to work with what we've got. Here's our fix for this anchoring problem. After measurement, you can see the layout of the anchor in the milling vise. Center drill, twist drill, tap drill, 
and set screw. We think all we need for this is a 1032. Here's what the modified acre looks like from the top, but it's the side view that gives us the insights. Here's what we call the pinch point. This leverages into the back of the uh, stock. So once the mounting screw goes in here, this part is fixed. What we call the action shelf fits in between the receiver and the trigger group. So the idea was you turn that little set screw tension up there and that would pinch between the receiver and the trigger group and give you stability. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way very well. So with this uh, screw coming in, driving into the back of the receiver, uh, it puts a force back onto the pinch point. It puts a force down onto the, uh, the mounting screw and drives up the shelf in, uh, in tension. And then also it drives forward to take out play in the, uh, in the stock and put pressure on the intention on the uh, takedown screw and gives a very solid base to work from for the back part of the action. Well, what's the big deal? Um, a little play makes a big difference. It's a trig problem. So 50 yards is 1,800 inches. At 50 yards, an MOA is about a half an inch. When you go back and calculate it out, 16 thousandths of a degree of play is all it takes to create a 101 MOA deviation 50 yards out. So we now introduce the VQ Build 2.0 for 2021. Uh, we've added the fix to the rifle. We firmly seat the three millimeter anchor screw torque up the front takedown screw, and then drive in the anchor set screw to remove the play, and you wouldn't be, believe the amount of play that gets removed. So we now have a decent uh, two-point bedding. Uh, on our stock, you can put a flashlight down here and actually see the set screw go into the receiver so you know it's working. We added a cool paint job we call the Dead Red Q. Uh, there's several of my competitors that can outshoot your humble narrator so I thought if I painted this with a uh, venomous snake kind of look to it, maybe I can make some of my competitors nervous. For uh, ammo, qualify a lot of SK Standard, a couple of lots of Ely Standard, which is the bulk pack of their target offering. And then we also wanted to try CC, CCI Standard Velocity, both out of the box. And we also reprofiled it to 960 mils. Uh, this basically is making a flat point out of the round point. Uh, we have a video that talks all about that with the Neil Waltz die, so we won't go into detail here. And then we have one lot of Ely match. Here's our range test setup. Uh, we normally just go with a bipod, but use the front rest here for a little extra stability. Lab radar, uh, weather flow weather meter. Um, the tablet with Bluetooth, notebooks, target sheets. We won't go into any detail. You can check out our other videos, Pounder Z, Bounder Drag, Tall Target Testing, and it goes into all these things in a lot more detail. Here are the target workups for the two Ely Standard Velocity rounds at 50 yards. Uh, we provide a summary uh, next. We just wanted to show that uh, we're not seeing any profound stringing uh, we would suggest that we got pretty good bedding. The other thing was that uh, most of these standard deviations are, are low double digit or single digit, but you'll see this guy here is 20. And then you'll see we've got uh, what could potentially be an outlier here. But we wanna make sure we include these in our statistics because this is what we might be seeing in a match. So we wanna be realistic about uh, really evaluating our ammunition properly. Let's look at performance summaries of the VQ 2.0. This was our initial performance, and these others are from our shooting session now. We don't have the original lot of SK Standard Plus. This lot has a velocity of uh, about 100 feet per second slower. So you can see the Mach number here about 0.9, down here 0.3.
So a couple of things that we don't like the the uh, muzzle velocity, the bolt cycling was still good, but we didn't like how it worked, so we didn't bother studying these groups any further. Uh, the CCI standard uh, comes in about where we want it on velocity and Mach, but the groups were a little too open. Perhaps the uh, profile, the reprofile bullets might be a little tighter, but those gains are going to be statistical, and we don't want to take that time right now, and so we didn't discuss these groups any further. Uh, the Ely match velocities were higher, so now our Mach's getting about 0.96. That's a little higher than we want. But also it's important to note the groups opened up. The uh, bolt cycling is not quite to our liking. It's starting to kiss the bumper and we don't care for that. So we didn't study these groups any further. So when we look at the two Ely, the two uh, Ely lots, we see that the, um, the Mach numbers are pretty comparable. You see the average CEP up here is 0.20 and here's 0.22. If you remember, this was the lot number that had a a velocity standard deviation pretty high. So normally the other groups were actually a little better for 441 than for 316. But uh, as I mentioned, you, you take these things the way they lie. The bottom line, we're sitting right around about of MOA. So we think that the, the performance that we have now with the VQ 2.0 is comparable to what we had going into this a couple of years ago. We think we've demonstrated at the 1MOA level the performance of the autoloaders comparable with bolt guns. So this could be an alternative you could consider for precision rimfire. There's uh, many build options which were originally only available on bolt guns. Uh, you'll have to do a careful build, expect some tuning, and selecting ammo is very important. If you haven't already, consider joining in on Precision Rim Fire. There's local and regional matches in both the uh, Precision Rifle Series and National Rifle League are very active in uh, Precision Rim Fire. You can start on the shallow end of the pool and wade into the deep end when you're ready. You'll build your technical know-how and shooting skills, have a lot of fun, and meet some really fine people along the way. This completes our presentation, and as you're thinking about subscribing, please look over these important notes and disclaimers. They are here for your protection and ours. Thanks for watching. Be safe. See you soon.